them. They did get to uh, Sister Gabbard's parents' church this morning. They were very surprised, so keep them in your prayers. Hopefully they have a good service there. I'm ready to have a good service here. How about you? Psalmist said in chapter 95, said, Oh, come let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Could you join me in that this morning? I'm here to worship the Lord. How about you? Let's stand all over the house. Let's get ready to worship. Let's enter into his courts with thanksgiving and into his gates with praise. And let's let him know we love him this morning. Brother Kevin, come on, lead our worship this morning. Praise the Lord. Let's turn to page 390. Let's sing There's Power in the Blood. There we go. Page 390, There's Power in the Blood. We're talking about in Sunday school that ended our lesson talking about the scripture talks about psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I'm thankful for the theology in these songs, aren't you? I'm so glad there's power in the blood of Jesus this morning. Let's sing it. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Oh, the Lamb. Yes, there's still power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood. Aren't you thankful for it? Oh, I know there's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Oh, of the Lamb. Oh, there's power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power. Oh, wonder working power in the blood. Oh, Yes, I know there's power, power, oh, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, 
there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from that burden of sin? Hallelujah. There's power in the blood. Oh, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's still wonder working power in his blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Oh, have you experienced it? Oh, there's still power. Oh, power. Wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood. Oh, power in the blood. Why don't you come for a cleansing at Calvary's tide? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah. If you're thankful for the power, you know what we're talking about. We ought to praise Him because He's worthy. It's because of that blood. Amen. That we've been set free this morning. Let's turn to page 235 and sing, He set me free. Amen. Let's sing it like we mean it. We know what we're talking about. 235. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt Oh, no freedom from my sorrow I felt Oh, but Jesus came and listened to me And glory to God, he set me free Oh, he set me free, yes, he set me free Oh, he broke the bonds of prison for me And I'm glory bound by Jesus to see Oh, glory to God, he set me free now I am climbing higher each day Oh, darkness of night has drifted away Oh, my feet are planted on higher ground And glory to God, I'm homeward bound Oh, he set me free, yes, he set me free Oh, he broke the bonds of prison for me And I'm glory Bound my Jesus to see. Oh, glory to God, He set me free. Yes, He set me free. Yes, He set me free. Oh, He broke the bonds of prison for me, and I'm glory bound my Jesus to see. Oh, glory to God, He set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound Oh, not of this old world shall turn me around Oh, daily I'm working, I'm praying to And glory to God, I'm gonna go right on through Oh, he set me free, yes, he set me free Oh, he broke the bonds of prison for me And I'm glory bound my Jesus to see oh glory to God he set me free now once like a bird in prison I dwelled oh no freedom from my sorrow I felt oh but then Jesus he came and he listened to me and glory to 
of God. You remember when he said you free. Oh, he set me free. Yes, he set me free. Oh, he broke the bonds of prison for me. And I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Oh, glory to God, he set me free. Oh, now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. Oh, my feet are planted on higher ground. And glory to God, I'm homeward bound. Oh, he set me free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he broke the bonds of prison for me. And I'm glory bound, my Jesus to see. Oh, glory to God. I remember when he did it. Hallelujah. Oh, he set me free. Yes, he set me free. Oh, he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus to see. Oh, glory to God, he set me free. Now goodbye to sin and things that confound. Oh, I won't let anything of the world turn me around. Daily I'm working and I'm praying too. And by the help and grace of God, I plan to go right on through. Oh, he set me free. Yes, he set me free. Oh, he broke the bonds of prison just for me. And I'm glory bound. My Jesus, I'm going to see Oh, glory to God He set me free Goodbye to sin And the things that confound Oh, not of this old world I won't let it turn me around Oh, daily I'm working And I'm praying too And glory to God I'm going to go right on through Oh, he set me free Yes, he set me free Oh, he broke the bonds of prison for me And I'm glory bound My Jesus to see Oh, glory to God He set me free You remember? Once like a bird in prison I dwelled I didn't have any freedom Oh, from the sorrow I felt Oh, but then Jesus came And he listened, he heard my cry Oh, and glory to God He set me free Oh, he set me free Yes, he set me free Oh, he broke the bonds Of prison for me And I'm glory bound By Jesus to see Oh, glory to God He set me free Oh, if you've been set free Let's praise him Hallelujah, if you remember what he did for you And what it used to be And what you used to be Aren't you glad you're not the same Hallelujah Amen, he made a change only Jesus could do Hallelujah, you know what you used to be But thank God you're not that anymore Because you've been set free Hallelujah, I'm thankful for it this morning Glory to God, hallelujah Oh, now I am climbing higher each day And darkness of night has drifted away Because my feet are planted on higher ground And glory to God, I am homeward bound Oh, he set me free, yes, he set me free Oh, he broke the bonds of prison for me And I'm glory bound Jesus to see Oh glory to God He set me free Oh he set me free Yes he set me free Oh he broke the bonds Of prison for me And I'm glory bound My Jesus to see Oh glory to God He set me free Amen let's praise him Like we're glad about it Hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Aren't you glad to be free, set free, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost? I'm thankful for what he's done for me. 
Callie, come on, get ready to sing. Uh, he was singing there about being set free. I remember I grew up in a past preacher's home. I grew up in a good godly home. But there was a time I thought, Philip, I would just do it my way. I would thought I'd just have a little fun. Uh, and I did. I had a fun time. I, I did what I wanted to do, Micah. And it was fun for a while. But I remember uh, sitting in my bed at night uh, wishing I could pray, uh, wishing I could feel uh, the Spirit of God, uh, wishing uh, I could cut free uh, from that which held me and I remember the night I couldn't tell you what the preacher prayed what he preached on that night I just wish he'd hurry up and give his altar call because I was there to get back with God and I remember falling into that altar at the first night of a youth camp and God set me free do you remember where you were when God cut loose the ties when God broke the bondage of sin on hold on your life I think we got something to worship about I think we got a reason to rejoice this morning I think we have a reason on a Sunday morning to let God know how good he is Peter said salvation was by the long suffering of an almighty God aren't you thankful God took the time to deal with you not once not twice but over and over again God never let go he never gave up he never walked out uh, the door always swung open because uh, he loves you uh, aren't you thankful uh, give him praise this morning saying I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life you have been close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful and all my if you have been so
of the goodness of God. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. for the goodness of God this morning. I'm thankful for a great God, a God that loves us, that cares about us. We were talking, I was talking to Brother Jordan the other day, we were talking about some different religions in the world. And every other religion, they got to do what they can do to appease God. Christianity is the one and only religion where God loved you enough to come after you. Think about it. God sent His only Son that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish. He loves you, church. He loves each and every one of us. Children, you may be dismissed to children's church. I'm going to change the order of the service. As they're dismissing, I was thinking there as she was singing in Sunday school, we've been, we started going through the seven churches there in the first part of Revelation. Two of those churches, he had no, Jesus found no fault in. Five of them, there was a problem. But all five that there had a problem, he gave them a, a way to make it right. And to all seven, they were given a gift for him that overcame. Think about it. The faithfulness and the goodness of God. I didn't deserve his grace the first time he set me free. I didn't deserve his grace when he dealt with me at the altar for the first time. And I sure didn't deserve it the second or the third or the fourth. You fill in the blank. I'm thankful for the goodness of God. No matter the fault, if I'll confess it and make it right, God lays a path for forgiveness and restoration. I'm thankful for a good God this morning, a God that loves us. Brother Troy, come on. Going to change the order of the service this morning. Appreciate Brother Troy and his ministry. Y'all get in here with him and back him up and preach with him this morning. Appreciate the presence of the Lord. Don't you miss Brother Gabbard? <laughs> Amen. I miss his presence too. And we're glad for this opportunity. And uh, thank you for being faithful to the Lord and to his house. And uh, good to see you in the house of the Lord. And uh, it's good to see Stan and Barbara back this morning. And I've uh, been missing them. And uh, glad they're back with us and their family. Amen. All right. Genesis chapter number 18. And if I say I'm nervous, that's an understatement, I promise you. And it uh, feels like this is my first time up here. And uh, I hope you get in and help me here for just a little bit. Genesis chapter 18, when you have it. We'll just stand and uh, read a couple verses here. And the Lord appeared, verse 1, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. I mean, we sure can relate to that, can't we? It's been hot around here. Amen. And he lift up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran 
to meet them from the tent door. And he bowed himself to the ground. Amen. And he bowed himself to the ground. You may be seated. And if you'll just hold your place there in Genesis chapter 18, and uh, you can follow along. And uh, there's some things I want to bring out from here. And uh, I appreciate the way that the service went this morning and uh, how when Brother Kevin got to singing that, especially that second song and uh, your reaction and uh, that just uh, goes right along with uh, what I want to preach this morning. And uh, I, I want to preach from this thought on how to entertain the Lord, how to entertain the Lord. And uh, that word entertain, and uh, oftentimes we'll, maybe when the choir's coming up or even in our preaching, we'll, we'll, we'll make the statement, we're not here to entertain you. We're not here to put on a show to, uh, to try to hold your attention and uh, keep you interested. Now, that's not what I'm talking about, but this word entertain, it means to, sh uh, to show hospitality to and uh, it, it means to welcome one in. And uh, we, we say uh, many times um, that we need the presence of the Lord in our services. How I many can agree with that? And uh, really, we, we say it often, and, and it's more than just a cliche, and it's more than just a, a, a ritual or something to say, but don't let us ever forget that we have got to have the presence of the Lord in our services. For if there is no presence of God, nobody can be saved in our midst. Nobody can be delivered. Nobody can be set free. Nobody can go through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost if the presence of the Lord is not in the house. Can you say amen? I don't have to be here for you to have church. We love Brother Gabbert. And we, we love him. Well, and I want to, and there, there's times just obvious, like this morning, uh, when him and Sister Gabbert can't be here, we miss him, we wish he was here, but the fact of the matter, at least for a service, uh, we can have church without the Gabbert. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? But we cannot have church without the presence of the Lord. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, without his presence, we can absolutely do nothing. Uh, and, man, many, and, and the scripture said, uh, and man, we're two or three or get together. Uh, in his name, he said, I will be uh, in the midst of them. Uh, and I want to tell you, when he, uh, we, we say, Lord, uh, we invite your presence. Uh, uh, we start the service many times, uh, and we say, Let's invite the Lord in the house. But I wonder when he gets here, what's going to be our response after he shows up? How are we going to entertain the presence of the Lord? Amen. Stay with me here for a while. We invite him here. We ask him to come by. And he promised to be here. But after he gets here, what, what do we do from there? I really think we, uh, you responded well this morning. How many felt the Lord show up? And then as they begin to sing, he set me free. Oh, but wouldn't it be sad to say if the Lord would say, you know, you invited me on a Sunday morning. And I showed up. But when I got there, I wonder why they even invited me. I wonder why they even took the time to ask me to come by. I, I tell you, there, there's just something, and, and please, uh, please don't ever do this. And uh, if you don't want me to come to your house, don't ever invite me. But it's a very disturbing feeling when somebody invites you to their house and, yeah, come on over, and you actually take them up on that offer, Brother Sean, and when you get there, you feel so uncomfortable. 
You feel like you're intruding. You feel like they don't want you. And you know, I, I was of one place one time, and man, and I felt so out of place and comfortable. And, and I, I, I didn't have my own right. And man, I was with somebody else. Oh, but I tell you what I did. And man, I got outside. I got to walking. And I called another friend. And I said, meet me down here. And man, I'm ready to leave. Oh, but I tell you, uh, when we take the time to invite him, uh, uh, when we say, Lord, we want you here uh, on a Sunday morning, uh, I tell you, he shows up. Uh, I want to know how to make him welcome. Uh, I want to know how to entertain him. Uh, I want to know, Lord, uh, I am glad uh, that you're in the house this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So how do we entertain the Lord? But on the other side of that, before we move on, I believe that if we invite the Lord, and I believe that if we learn to welcome him well, hey amen, I'm telling you, on the other side of that, we're glad to go back to that same. Somebody invites you to the house, and hey man, maybe a nice meal and nice fellowship, and you feel at home, you feel at ease. You know what it makes you want to do? It makes you want to go back again. Well, you like to make it so, hey man, so, uh, so, so, such a welcome, hey man, place for God tonight, this morning. Uh, hey man, that God said they treated me so well uh, on Sunday morning, Brother Travis. Uh, I believe I'll just show back up on Sunday night. Uh, even though Kevin's going to preach, uh, I believe I'll just show up again. Uh, uh, somebody shout hallelujah. I like to know how to make the Lord welcome uh, in his own house. Uh, I like to let the Lord know. Uh, we're not only inviting you, but we're glad that you are among your people. For we can't have church without the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at our text tonight, this morning. Amen. Let's make him welcome. Amen. Oh, Abraham shows us some lessons on how to entertain the presence of the Lord. Amen. Abraham is sitting in the door of his tent. Amen. On a hot day. And all of a sudden, Brother Sly, he looks up. And there are three visitors that are walking up to his door. Amen. In the first lesson we learn how to entertain the Lord is Abraham recognized who it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, I hope you help me to preach here. Brother Stephen, he recognized who these visitors was. Hey, man, this wasn't just a neighbor. Hey, man, this wasn't just a co-worker that came by. Hey, man, this wasn't just a nosy neighbor. I wonder why, hey, man, a hundred-year-old man, hey, man, is sitting out in the heat. But Abraham realized, oh, you're not an ordinary neighbor. Oh, you're not just a co-worker. Uh, but I recognize uh, uh, this is God uh, uh, that has came to my house. Uh, uh, this is none other uh, uh, than the Lord uh, himself. Uh, and can I tell you, church, uh, if we're going to entertain God uh, uh, like we ought to, uh, uh, we've got to recognize uh, he's more than a normal person. Uh, it's God uh, uh, that is among you and I this morning. I'm afraid too many times, hey amen, we are sitting right in our churches and we are failing to recognize who it is that's walking up and down these aisles. Come on, anybody there. Hey Amen. We are failing to recognize. Hey Amen. When Brother Gabbard is preaching, it's more than just a man. Come on up here. But there's a God in heaven that has settled down among us and is talking to you and I. And I tell you, I like to make him welcome. But first, I gotta recognize who it is in the house this morning. Oh yeah. But if we're not careful. We'll fail to recognize him when he's right here among us. Just as Jacob, when he woke up out of his sleep, his dream, what did Jacob say? 
surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. He didn't say was, he said is. He was still there. He said, but his presence has been here, and I didn't even know it. Oh, what an offense. What an offense when we fail to acknowledge who it is that's among us. We've got great missionaries. We've got great preachers. We've got great singers that we're thankful for. But when we fail to recognize who it is that's among us, what an injustice we do to the presence of God. And why would God want to take time to settle among us when we are constantly ignoring his very presence? Oh, help me. Hey man, oh, I've been to churches. Hey man, help me. I hope you just help me to get through this here. But I've been through churches when the glory of God was settled down and folks were looking around and they were talking. And come on, help me for a little while. You know why I churned? Oh, they failed to recognize it's God in the house. It's the glory of the Lord. Oh, they took the time to settle among us. But I tell you, I like to know how to entertain him. And I like to recognize it's the Lord in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa. We're so distracted. I said we. We're so distracted. I'm telling you, there was a girl in the church that I grew up in. I mean, she, she had a deteriorating hip. She was on crutches. And if you go to the old Waynesville church, you'll still see the braces hanging. Hey, man, their crutches, the braces. Hey, man. And God, hey, man, they, the, mom, the mom brought her up. Hey, man, and Brother Reigns prayed for her. Hey, man, took her by the hand. Hey, man, and led her across the front of the church. Hey, man, he told the mom, he said, you can't tell what God has done until you take off the braces. And they took off the braces, and he held her hand and walked her across the front and let go. And God instantly healed her. Hey, man, and she's healed this day. But can I tell you the sad thing? Hey, man, there were many in that church building that night that never saw what happened. But they missed a miracle. It was right in the midst of them, Brother William. There was God working. It was God performing a miracle. But there were those that failed to recognize what was happening. I don't want to miss the miracle. I don't want to miss what God's doing. When God is working right in our midst this morning. Don't let us fail to recognize when he's moving and just who it is. Abraham said, I perceive, I recognize this ain't no ordinary person. This is the great I am. This is the great I am. And there are times, Brother Nathan, when we're in services and they're slow. And there, you're pulling like I am this morning. Come on in. But then all of a sudden, Brother Steve Sly, you can feel the presence of God as it begins to settle down. And you recognize something changed in the atmosphere. Something turned. Oh, come on out. Hey, hey, hey. You know why we recognize oh, there's somebody at our door. Oh, there's a heavenly visitor. And it's God himself. And oh, I wonder what would happen this morning if we recognize he's in the house. And in case you didn't realize it, he's in the house right now. Let's make him welcome. Let's let him know, Lord, I recognize you, and you're welcome this morning. Oh, I need to move. Abraham showed us how to entertain the Lord by recognizing who it was. Let me go a little further as I hurry. Not only did he recognize but I want to show you how we are to entertain him further 
Abraham requested. Look at his request. Verse 3, he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. But here's my request. Abide with me for a little while. My request, my petition is, Lord, I know who you are. And now as my heart's cry, stay with me a little while. Oh, I like the old song, The Garden. Anybody remember The Garden? Uh, where that verse said, uh, and I stay in the garden with him. Uh, and then Abraham said, uh, I know who you are. Uh, and I love your presence so well uh, that it's my prayer. Uh, oh, Lord, pass me not away. Uh, oh, Lord, abide. Uh, I tell you this morning, uh, I'd like to make a request to the Lord. Lord, uh, Lord, we want you to stay. Uh, Lord, we want you to abide. Uh, we need you uh, right here among us this morning. I'm going to preach here. I don't want to make nobody mad, but here. We have become impatient to the presence of the Lord. God will give you 45 minutes to work. And anything beyond that. We're asking you to leave. We don't say those words out loud. We're too fearful. But our actions, come on. I am not... I, I, I'm not a patient person and, and I don't like to drag things out and we're not going to drag things I told him this here hey man, at the outreach hey man, we're, we're, we're not going to drag things out but on the other side of that as long as the Holy Ghost is choosing to abide and work among us a church we ought not get in a hurry Abraham did say Lord I got to get up early in the morning Lord you know what time Come on now. I gotta go to work. No. But Abraham said, I got one request. Abide in my house. I stay a little longer. I love your presence so much that I long for you to tarry in my house. Oh, yeah. I have seen people. I've seen people that have left. Early, time and time again. I'm just going to preach here. It's all I know to do. And God has spoken. Message in tongues. Interpretations. Things have been accomplished. And Brother Stephen, they missed it all. Because they got in a hurry to leave the present. Are you anybody help? I'm preaching this morning on how to entertain the Lord. I don't want to push him out of door. I don't want to hurry in the lead. I don't want to act like I got somewhere better to go. But Lord, as long as you abide, stay among us. We love your presence. Amen. He recognized. And he calls him. Lord Terry, abide. Stay with me. Amen. Lord, I got to have you. God is something. Why? Why, Abraham? Why? I know it hadn't been written yet. But in thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore lord i'm not looking to push you out lord i'm not looking to rush you amen lord thank you for stopping by Lord, thank you for the few goosebumps that I feel in my arms right now. Uh, but Lord, you know, come on now. I, I got to go here. I got to do this. Uh, Lord, I'm glad that you took a minute uh, and then to stop by. Uh, but Abraham, uh, when he recognized who it was, uh, uh, there was something inside. Uh, uh, that said everything else. Uh, I can't put on hold. Uh, uh, let me abide. Uh, you know why Job said, uh, thy visitation uh, has preserved my spirit. 
are the only reason you and I have made it to 2023. We've had a visitation of the presence of God. And that's why we're crying, Lord, Terry, a little Lift your hands and ask the Lord to help us. Oh, God. He recognized him. And Brother William, he requested, let me linger here. Let me be like Joshua. Let me tarry behind a little while longer. That's what the disciples did. They tarried until the Holy Ghost came. Jesus had already breathed and moved on them. They said, that's enough to make us tarry. Until he abides within us. Is that your request this morning? Is that your desire? Lord, I don't want to just feel you on a Sunday morning. Lord, I don't want to just occasionally bump into you. You stop by for a weekend visit. But Lord, it's the desire of my heart that you will abide. The old song said, I'm rejoicing night and day. As I walk the pilgrim way. For the hand of God in all my life I see. And the reason I'm my bliss. Yeah, the reason all of this, I can't remember. That the comforter, he abides with me. Songwriter, what makes you happy? I'll tell you, he abides. He abides. Anybody can say that this morning? He abides. He abides this morning. Amen. Abraham requested, Lord, abide in my. Can I go a little further on how to entertain the Lord this morning? Amen. After we've recognized him. Amen. After we requested his presence to abide. Amen. There was something that Abraham did. Amen. My Bible said, Amen. He rendered unto the Lord. Yeah. It was a gift, brother, that he had. Amen. He said, Abide. Amen. I'll get my wife to bake some cakes. Amen. We'll have a spread on the table. Amen. He told the servant, Amen. Come on down. Amen. We're going to kill. Amen. that old cow we've got in the back field we've had her for a while she's older and we're going to lose her anyhow let's just go ahead and kill her brother William and we'll give it to your visitors Come on, brother Kevin I can hear Abraham rebuking that servant no you don't understand who it is this is God in my house and I'm not giving him my leftovers I'm not giving him the worst in the field but there's a young tender calf there's a one come on help me I'm going to give him I'm going to render the Lord the best that I have and I wonder when the Lord shows up can we pour out a render our best praise can we render our best worship can you render the best service uh, that you have uh, to give to God this morning? Don't give God the leftovers. Uh, give him the very best you got this morning. I'm glad when we're broken. I'm glad when we're shattered. God takes it. But before we get broken, this morning we ought to go ahead and render our very best to him. Let's give him the best, the tender. Remember now I'm thy creator in the days of thy youth. What Solomon was saying, you've got the very best you got right now. Give it to him now. Give it to him. Come on. But you know what? This was a sacrifice. Uh, when, I, when I got to looking at this, hey amen, when I got to looking at this, Brother William, you have to notice here, 
the text says that Abraham was sitting in the door of his tent in the heat of the day. If you read on in that text, you'll find that because of their age, Sarah laughed. Abraham was right at 100 years old. Come on now. Brother Steve Sly, hey man, he told Sarah to bake some cakes. But I want you to notice here, and the Bible said in verse 7, and Abraham ran unto the herd. Woo. Just a last week or a few servants ago, I seen Brother Sly, what, 85, 86. It may begin to run around the church. Help me right now. Help me. Come on now. You think that's easy? Well, come on now. Abraham was right at 100 years old. But Abraham said, I believe what I'll do. I know it's hot. I know I'll get winded. I know I'll be out of breath. But I want to run. I want to render the God of the very best that I have. About too many times. It's too much a sacrifice just to lift your hands. It's too much a sacrifice to show hallelujah. But I want to God that somebody will recognize and render the God the very best that you have. Lift your hands and worship Many times, and I've said it, I'm going to try not to say it no more. I'll get up to read my text. Today I just read two. When I read five or more verses. I've said it. Like I said, I'm going to try not to say it. Well, maybe I'm going to read one down through verse 10. You hear the air go out. We gotta stand here for ten long verses. I apologize now. Oh, I, I didn't mean to keep you standing so long and reading. Well, yet we can go back to that water fountain and we can stand for thirty minutes talking about any little thing that's gonna pass away. And it's too much of a sacrifice to honor the word of God that you're able. I'm talking about able people. I preach about how to entertain the presence of God. When somebody gets up to sing and they sing the verse, I want too many times. Are we ready to sit down? Are we ready to get caught? Hey, hey. But Abraham said, I don't care if I'm 100 or 20 years old. I know who's in my house. I recognize who it is. And if I got to run, let me run. If I got to pass out, I'll pass out. I just want to render to God. Oh, the best praise oh, that I have left in her cane, the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Brother Sly, you put me to shame too many times. It is a 45 year old. <laughs> I can wrestle with Braden, still beat him. Whew. I can, I can play football. But sometimes my feet stays glued to where I am. I look at Abraham. There was sweat pouring. I can hear him gasping about as bad as I am right now. But Abraham said. Whatever it takes, I gotta let him know he's welcome. <sighs> Whatever I gotta do, I gotta let him know. Lord, you're welcome here. As a matter of fact, accept my gift. It carry a little while. You know what we do when we fellowship? We eat. And Abraham was saying, God, let's have fellowship. Let's have communion. Oh, hey. Let's entertain the presence. Recognize him. Request for him to 
stay and render the best gift of your worship this morning. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Come on in music, please, Sister Whitney. Whoever. Let me read this here. There's one more. We'll slow it down here on how to entertain the Lord after we've recognized him. After we requested his presence to abide, after we've rendered the very best that we can offer, let me tell you another way to honor and to entertain the Lord. And that's to receive his promise. Abraham recognized his person. He requested his presence. He rendered his present. And now he's here to receive the promise. Abraham, you're going to have a son. I'm going to give you Isaac. Notice what the writer Paul said. Speaking of Abraham. And being not weak... He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Brother Kevin Holcomb, you know how Abraham received the promise, it was by faith. And the writer of Hebrews in 11, 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. But if you turn that around, I believe you can say, but with faith, it's possible to please God. And when God left Abraham that day, because of the faith of Abraham, I believe God can say, I'm pleased in Abraham. And I want to tell you how we can please the Lord this morning. Amen. Is to take his word that he's given you and say, Lord, I choose to receive your promise. I'm telling you, you won't honor anybody. I said, you won't honor anybody if you reject their promises, if you discount their word. But when you say, I believe what you told me, Brother William, you will honor them. And when Abraham believed God's promise. He pleased the Lord. And I wonder if anybody in the house this morning uh, that said, by faith, God, I want to honor you by believing your promise and receiving what you have for me this morning. Oh, I wish I could have done better. That's all I had. Let me say this, listen to me. God is going to have a church. It's not going extinct. He's got a glorious church, and he will. But I want to tell you, on an individual and as a body in a, any collective building if we get to the point to where it's not our priority to welcome his spirit yes there will be a church down the road but there could come a time that God starts to withdraw I've seen it if I didn't see the history of it, I couldn't say that. But I would have been in churches that were notable for the presence and the power of God. And there are those in this group that knows who I'm talking about. But everything else became too important. And now all is there is an empty building and just a shell of what it used to be. Because somebody forgot how to entertain his presence. 
What about in your personal life? Have you recognized? Brother Troy, everything just seemed to be turned upside down. Everything seems to just be going wrong. If you recognize maybe it's him calling you. I'd like to come back and abide where I once stood in your habitation. Have we gotten so busy with life and pleasure and everything else? That we've hurried him along. That we didn't recognize he was there for our own benefit. But life crowded him out the door. Let me tell you this morning, I believe he's back again. You see, the church, Brother Stephen. They ought to see it. That was his church. That was his house. They had cried at him on the outside. Brother William. They had pushed him out. For they forgot to entertain him. But what I like about that, and goes right along with what you're saying. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock and this morning you might feel like your life has pushed him right out you may feel like circumstances and things that happen may be in or out of your control and now you find him on the outside but I'm telling you if you'll tune your ear toward heavenward I believe you can hear a knock at the door of your heart saying if you'll open up behold I stand at your door and knock and if any man will hear my voice I'll tell you what I'll do I'll come right back in I'll forget about yesterday I'll forget how you shut me out but I will abide and fellowship in your house anybody want to entertain the Lord anybody want to open the door and say come on in Lord come on in Lord let me render a gift to you this morning Put your hands, church. Oh, in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, the Prince of Peace. Anybody hear him knocking this morning? Troubles vanish, and hearts are mended in the presence. Anybody recognize that presence? Of the King. My question is if you recognized him, what is your response right now? I said, if you've recognized him, what is your response right now? Are you going to let him keep knocking and not answer the door? Are you going to leave him standing on the outside? Or are you going to respond and say, come on in, Lord. Come on. Prince of peace. Everybody come this morning. Everybody. Troubles vanish. Hearts are mended oh, in the presence of the King. Oh, in the presence 
Talk of war in me. All day long I've struggled for the answers that I need. Then I come into His presence, and all my questions become clear. For that sacred moment, no doubt can interfere in the presence of Jehovah, oh, God Almighty. Prince 
very Prince of Peace in troubles land and hearts are mended oh, in the presence of the King. Through His grace the Lord provided a place for us to rest, a place to find the answers in the hours of distress. Now there's never any reason for you to give up in despair just slip away and breathe his name 